should be through the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. But I know sometimes you hear the We'll have good time. Let's do it. Congratulations. Good morning, everyone. Happy Veterans Day. Please remain standing for the Invocation, National Anthem, and Pledge of Allegiance. Reverend McCoy. Reverend McCoy is one of the fire chaplains. Let us pray. Merciful God, we gather on this occasion to give thanks for the men and women of our armed forces. We gather again to honor them who by their service have honored and continue to honor you. We give thanks for the sacrifices they've made, for the sacrifices they're making now on our behalf, and on behalf of freedom-loving people everywhere. Defend them, we pray, with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Grant them courage in the perils they face, an abiding sense, O oh God, of your nearness to them. We pray for those who suffer the wounds of war, physical, emotional, and spiritual wounds. For their courage and strength, we pray, and for the healing of your merciful love. We ask, O oh God, that you would touch the minds and hearts of us all, that we may be free of hatred and misunderstanding. Grant each of us, we pray, the will to serve justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly in your way. May our nation serve your purposes for the healing of all nations, and may each one of us be instruments of your peace. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Stevan Nascimento from Brockton High will sing the national anthem. Freeze it! Do you want to hold it or do you want it in the sand? Oh! Um, I can hold it, it doesn't matter. Oh, say, can you see? So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red red the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Lima Deleuze Pinto from Broughton High's JROTC will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Colors, now! Hooray! Rush! So 
my wish for the rain to hold off was granted, but we have this wind instead. So we'll try to keep it moving along because it's chilly with this cutting through. Um, Mayor Sullivan is not here today due to illness, but he sends his heartfelt thanks to every veteran who served or is serving the country. Um, and I don't know if you remember at the last parade, I didn't print out the proclamation in real big letters. So of course today I did, and he's not here to read it now that it's, I made it easy for him. So instead, um, I didn't know this, but I found out today that Mike Brady is our senior uh, state our senior rep at the state, state level, and he outranked Jerry Cassidy. So he gets the pleasure of reading the Veterans Day proclamation from Governor Healy. Senator Brady. Thank you. And let's give a round of applause. Our head of Veterans Services, Kelly Young, who's doing a fantastic job in the City of Champions. And before I read this proclamation, I'm honored to be your state senator for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, representing the city of Brockton. We can never do enough for veterans in the Commonwealth. We passed the Valor Act, the Welcome Home Bill, and the governor has a very aggressive proposal that we must support that's gonna help veterans with disabilities, situations with their pensions, for tax credits, and most importantly, I heard from many veterans today to offer free license plates for our veterans moving forward. So let's give them a round of applause. This is a proclamation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation whereas since the Commonwealth's earliest days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of our freedom and liberty. Whereas on November 11, 1918, after four years of conflict, the armistice was signed in the farce of campaign by the Allied Nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. And whereas, since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans, and whereas, on November 2023, the world will commemorate the 105th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And whereas, there are approximately 300,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions of our veterans and what they've made to our country. And whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and bravery. Of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifice to serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And now therefore, I, Maura Haley, Governor of the Massachusetts, to hereby proclaim November 11, 2023 to be Veterans Day and urge all residents of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance, given at the Executive Chamber in Boston, the 11th day of November in the year 2023, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 247th. By Her Excellency, Maura Haley, the Governor of Massachusetts, Kimberly Driscoll, the Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts, and William Francis Galvin, the Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. So we have somewhat of a different setup for the speaker this year. Usually our keynote speaker is someone who gives a kind of a standard speech or words about veterans or historians that talk about the wars and the lives of vets. But we have something I think will be much better this year. We have poet Ron Whittle. He's a Vietnam vet. He's written several books. And he's gonna come up here and talk and tell some stories and perform some of his poetry for us. So, Mr. Whittle. Thank you so much, Kelly. On 
this day, we honor all of us that are veterans of many different wars and places that, that they protected and served our country. I am proud to stand before you, my brethren, both male and female, in all different branches. We are for, forever united with the title veteran. Though I don't know most of you, we are family in word and deed. I would also like to acknowledge those that served outside our military, the nurses, the doctors, the donut dollies, the Red Cross, the USO, and so many others that volunteered and received little to no acknowledgement in return. Home was as close as those guys. You gave us hope when in many cases, little, little was hard to find. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Much needs to be said for all the branches of the military, but I am not all that versed on the Army, the Air Force, or the Coast Guard. I do uh, uh, much, know much, I have considerable knowledge of the Navy and the Marine Corps, and it will be what I'll be speaking about today. That being said, I'm sure every branch can relate to a lot of the stories I'm about to tell. So my name is Ron Whittle. I'm an ex-Navy crew chief uh, on a helicopter. I want to extend my thanks for Kelly, once again, for inviting me here to speak to you. My first two years in the Navy, I trained with many of the Apollo astronauts in rescue techniques, as, as well as other duties. Little did I know at the time, but because of my training, I became a prime candidate of du for duty in Vietnam. I was gonna skip over the first two years and go, go to the first day in Vietnam. After arriving in Vietnam, I was told to report to a gunny sergeant's office with my paperwork. I went into his office having no idea what to expect. I, I was at that time just a couple months over the age of 19. I was a blonde, blue eyes, fair skinned, all American boy from the East Coast. The gunny looked at me in my paperwork, then looked at me and looked at the paper again, paperwork again and then looked back up to me and, and I quote, welcome to the Marine Corps with a foul, foul word attached that would be inappropriate to say here. I met up with my pilot a few hours later. I was, I, I, I was relieved to know that he was the one I was gonna be flying with for the next two years. My perspective from this point is mostly from the air. I had been assigned TDY tempor temporary duty to the Marine Corps. Evidently, uh, eventually I found myself in the Marine Corps Air Base at Marble Mountain, just south of Da Nang. The squadron we were attached to was called the Hounds from Hell. We did a couple quick training missions and it was a ride along to evaluate our ability to survive. After, after the second mission, I was given the name Sweetness because of my attitude towards the enemy. I named my helicopter Misunderstood, that's M-I-S-S, -S, Understood. I was now one of the infamous dogs over Vietnam. We were not allowed to use our real names for fear the enemy might figure out who we are. Our missions were wildly, widely varied. Once we were sent out to a ship, an LPH, which is a, an aircraft carrier for helicopters, off the coast of Vietnam, and I don't remember why at this, at this point in time, but we, or I had to wait for the pilot's briefing, I guess. All of a sudden, the ship went into general quarters. I was waiting for my pilot to come up and fire up the helicopter to get off the flight deck. After we got the rotor up to speed, we started to lift off, and the pilot got on the intercom to me and said, check this out. Imagine the superstructure over the flight deck. The ship's captain was standing on the bridge uh, in a catwalk with a helmet and a flak jacket and binoculars looking around. Above him was the admiral in the same getup doing the same thing. Above both of them was a signalman. It was a Kodak moment I will never forget. The signalman was standing there totally naked, flashing the flags around. <laughs> and the pilot and I howled laughing. Later, we learned on the signal, signalman been in the shower and when, when he went into general quarters. On his way to his duty station, they were locking down the watertight hatches and his towel got caught in one of them, and he, which left him naked. 10 years ago, I was told that I had bladder cancer. For the next, next eight years, my urologist twice or three times a year would go inside of me and scrape the walls of my bladder. Then I had to go through chemotherapy, which is absolutely awful. Three times, once every other week, 
after the operation. I, I wouldn't wish, to, wish this on my worst enemy. The doctors eventually finally gave up and decided that my bladder had to come out. I was told that they suspected it was caused by Agent Orange, which the lab later confirmed. This was done at the West Roxbury VA Hospital. The care I received was phenomenal. Dr. Lerner, Dr. Garisto saved my life. I was in surgery for almost 13 hours. Though, though I was uh, uh, to live, I had to learn how to live my life all over again. This happened a little over two years ago. The follow-up has been, been incredible, and I'm still cancer-free. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm speaking from a stance of not knowing much about the other branches of the military, but I did have a great deal of exposure to the Marines. I was a kid you always saw in the movies, the one that was a thorn in the sides of the Marines. It's true, truly legendary how the Navy and the Marine Corps don't get along. Which brings me to my next story. Every day while I was in Vietnam, I had to run the gauntlet of verbal abuse by three, three, Marine, Corps, three Marine Corps' finest. While I pre-flighted my helicopter, I was called all kinds of names like Squabby, uh, Squab Squabby or Squidly and, and others I dare not say right now. The three Marines in charge of servicing my helicop the helicopter and, and on a flight line duties. On this particular day, we were about to take off and the pilot said to me over the intercom, what's this all about? The three, ma three Marines were standing there in formation, giving us a fin single finger salute. I, st I told him, I said, I suppose I might have something to do with that. He said, what's that? And he says, I'm standing in the doorway blowing kisses at him. The pilot laughed and told me, someday they're going to kill you. On an armament replacement uh, flight in the base of some, uh, on a fire base to some Marines north and west of Da Nang, there was a, a neatly packed ammo box aboard my helicopter that didn't fit within what we were delivering. The lid was loose and easily removed. And inside the box was, was packed in straw was four quart bottles of Kentucky's finest bourbon. On top of the bottles an oat red property of the officers club in Da Nang, stolen by the hounds of hell, namely me, uh, delivered by the U.S. Navy vertical air. Have a nice day. Nice was crossed out, better was put in its place. After the entire load was unloaded, except for that one special box, I was standing outside of my helicopter, and I grabbed one of the bare-chested, ragged, ragged, ragged Marines by the shoulder. And although he couldn't hear me above the noise of the rotor and the motor, I motioned for him to come to the helicopter. I reached in and grabbed the box and opened it up so he could see the content. I watched his face light up with a big smile. I gave him a shush sign, you know, <laughs> and he acknowledged and shook my hand and gave me a thumbs up. I never got to fly back there again, and I often wondered what happened to those Marines after we flew off. So I'm going to read a couple poems to you that, that are written. Uh, so, uh, both of them actually were written in Vietnam, and I just I cleaned them up at years later. This one's called Hop Along Cassidy's Sidekick. I know a lot of you kids out here have no clue what it is, but our older vets here will know who it is. It was a TV character back in the early 50s. The range was no further than what I could see from our third floor apartment window. I was hop along Cassidy's five-year-old side, sidekick and we had many adventures. I would lie on the green and purple linoleum living room floor, my head cradled in my hands and my elbows on the floor, intently watching Hoppy on a family 10-inch black and white television that would get fuzzy and roll from time to time. We were the fastest on the draw, fist fighting this duo that ever tamed the West. Our two six guns holstered to our waist, cowboy boots, a black hat as our trademark. We ventured out to clean up the bandana face ba covered bandits that roamed the West. Many nights, Mom had to pry those guns from my hands before bedtime, tucking me in with a good night kiss. Oh, I knew I was going to grow up to be another, haunt, another hop along Cassidy, all right. I knew that for sure. Though I didn't own one yet, my horse was going to be named Blackie. Somewhere over the course of the time, I found that the real world was not black and white and extended well beyond my vision into living color. That I didn't agree with always, nor, nor did I always fit in. But I never forgot my hero, even, even as I got older. I thought of him less and less, but I wound up naming my horse, misunderstood. 
And I got to admit, sometimes, sometimes on a mission in my helicopter over the skies of Vietnam, when I was called on to use my military issue pistol to save my own life, as soon as I pulled it out from the underarm holster and pulled the trigger, I could see in my mind a kid that was me lying on the cold linoleum floor in that old three-decker in Worcester daydreaming about fighting the bad guys. With all the ugliness of war barking at my heels day and night, I would have gladly given up my pistol on nights as bad as this one. God forgive me. It's just that I really hate to admit it. As a combat-hardened 19-year-old, some days over here, I really needed mom to tuck me in and kiss me goodnight. So this is the next one, the last one is, is entitled, As I Remember It. Uh, this is based off tr true story, true, true events. At mail call, there was always at least one Italian guy in the squadron who mother, whose mother would send him a box full of provolone cheese and a bunch of pepperoni sticks. In the heat and humidity in Viet Vietnam, you could smell it a half a mile away. So could the enemy. It reeked of old dirty socks, but tasted out of this world. I think, there was, I think this is where I developed the taste for, for cheese and cold, ice cold beer. Pepperoni wasn't a that added attraction, and the only thing I got was bad news and possibly more bad news, though I have to admit my youngest sister, Jan, used to send me peanut cobbing strip, uh, strips that just cut out from our local newspaper. I'd always hoped Mom would send me some of her famous Toll, toll House cookies. Unfortunately, by the time I got them, they were nothing but crumbs. Misery and boredom was our friends and our companions. For most of us, in that, we shared almost everything together. Thank you, guys. I got one more thing I want to say. I appreciate all that, that, that I've been able to do here today to talk to you. I salute each and every one of you. And above it all, I am proud to be called a veteran. God bless America. Was anybody at Faneuil Hall yesterday at the state's executive office of Veterans Services Veterans Day event? Nobody? I thought I was going to be a lot more nervous. So I think I mentioned this in Memorial Day. The state, the governor elevated the Office of Veterans Services or the Department of Veterans Services to a to secretariat. So it's an executive office now. And they had a first time ever uh, Veterans Day ceremony in town. Um, and it was very nice. And of course, the secretary and I, great minds think alike, um, he quoted this quote, realistically, if anybody's into history and research, it's, it's not attributed to any one person. Some people say it's George Washington, but I don't think that's actually proven. But it goes something like, a generation's willingness to go to war for its country, for its nation, will be determined by how they saw the previous generation of veterans treated when they came home. So remember that in this climate we're in, we're in everybody, not everybody, very clearly not everybody, but people say things like stand with Ukraine or stand with insert here. What that truly means and who, who are the people that are actually going to be standing there? Because standing with somebody, it's not a bumper sticker, it's not a t-shirt, it's, it's an actual stance that you take. It's a physical stance. It's a physical action. And so when we commit to standing with somebody, we have to be really sure that that's where we want to stand because the, the impact is, goes on for generations and generations, and it will determine our credibility to our own young people and their willingness to continue to go to war based on how they think the previous generations were treated. I want to thank everybody that helped with the parade. Um, there's a lot that goes into this from the people who helped me sweep the streets, the traffic detail, 
uh, the folks that made copies and helped organize the lines earlier. Uh, it's, it was a team effort. So many departments in the city helped make this happen. Um, I'm gonna lose my voice in a minute, I'm sorry. So I wanna make sure that you know what our office does. We're the Veteran Services Department in Brockton. We're at the War Memorial Building up the street. And we do local, state, and federal benefits, but then we try to connect folks with services um, that we don't necessarily provide, but we have contacts that do. Our latest and greatest project is the Property Tax Workoff Program. So if you're a vet and you own a property in the city, um, you could come work for us for 100 hours and it'll be $1,500 off your taxes. And we have projects like cleaning up trash, we have gravestone and monument stone restorations. We have like a chemical you spray on there. Um, so we have people doing history projects like researching s military, <coughs> excuse me, military figures from the city and writing little bios so that we have that in our record as an office. Um, and we can pretty much make something up for your skill set, right? If you need to be sedentary, you can work at the library. Um, that's been expanded, that's why I'm talking it up. We only have eight people using it and there are 30 slots available. And I wanna make sure you know that because that is one of the benefits that we directly uh, organize the program. Excuse me. And Councillor Thompson, who was big in, in helping us amend this ordinance said, don't forget they can use a proxy. So if you're not able to do the work, someone else could do it for you. If you're looking to do volunteer hours, I have folks that I know could use money off their property taxes and you could work so that their bill is reduced. Um, I really like today, Veterans Day. It's a day I get to go see all my friends. We eat food, we get drinks, we talk, we look at pictures, we tell stories. It's a really fun day. I get to meet people like Ron and other vets here that I don't really get to have time to sit and talk to. Oh, it's a really fun day. But I'm, when people thank me for my service, which happens all day long, my phone won't stop going. I'm gonna have to set a new rule with my family. Don't text me happy Veterans Day until after noon time because I'm working. Um, but all day long, people thank you for your service. And it, I don't know how to respond. Like your welcome doesn't seem enough. Um, it's my honor to serve. I don't know, I feel cheesy when I say that. Um, so I'm gonna just stick with your welcome, but I wanna encourage all of you. Thanking us with your words is very nice. I don't wanna you know, discourage that ever. Oh, please thank us if, you, if that's how you feel. But I would just encourage you to be the kind of American worth sacrificing for. Or not even, you don't even have to be American. You could be the kind of person worth sacrificing for. I think that is the best way to thank a vet is to, to make what we do feel like maybe it was important to someone somewhere. Um, the VFW is having a ceremony at their uh, stone following this. Uh, Jerry from my office, Jerry, where are you? Jerry, Marine Corps vet, and Josue, Sergeant Major uniform in the back. They'll have tickets to the food trucks. Make sure you eat. Please take a ticket from them. Everybody, every vet who wanted a ticket has, has what they need. So please, everybody else, enjoy food. Uh, we have local Larry's Tacos, Deeg's Diner, Moizilla, and the sausage guy from Fenway. Um, and as the honor guard calls everybody to attention, the Fire Department, Pipes and Drums is gonna play, I can't read my writing, I think it's America the Beautiful, but it, they're patriotic set. So as you're walking away, the Pipes and Drums will be playing America the Beautiful. Thank you so much, happy Veterans Day.